from Haven Creek. Dad, is he here yet? Is he in the back? Well then, how about I introduce the worship team? Would that be good? And he can inter introduce Pastor Hill. Haven Creek worship team, would you come forward and lead us into praise? We are so excited to have you. Thank you so much for coming. We are looking forward to you. Yes. Thank you so much. Someone was just saying the last time they were here on a Friday night, they could hardly even stand still. So thank you so much. Well, yeah, thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It, is a, it is a blessing to be here. Yes, it is. You know, we're not strangers. That's right. We are at home. Amen. 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 We're going to call on the Lord Thank you, Jesus. for help. That's who we should call, right? Amen. So this song was requested, was sent. Um, I don't, and I don't know the gentleman that um, asked for us to sing it, but we're going to sing this song um, and dedicate it. Amen. Amen. Amen.
evening to everyone. How many of you know you have to expect great things? Yeah. Yeah. This is a simple song with a beautiful melody, but it's impactful. And we know that our relationship with Jesus Christ is the biggest expectation that we could ever imagine. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Sing it with me one more time. I'm expecting great things. Yes, I am. I'm expecting great things. Great, great things. things. Stand on your feet and sing it with me. I'm, I'm expecting great things. things. Yes, I am. I'm expecting great things. Sing it with me. I'm expecting great things. Great, great things. things. Okay, God. Great things. Great things. 
Thanks. This is going to be a great thing, so we're going to do this last song. <laughs> and then we're going to have Pastor Hill come up, okay? I'd like to thank the musicians. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much for filling in. How many love to praise the Lord? Yeah. We're going to sing a little bit of that. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise. to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock. He's my rock. Yeah. My rock, my sword and shield. And he's a will. He is a will in the middle of Regina said, thank you for letting us play with you. But <clears throat> you know what? Weren't you blessed by hearing? I believe they mean it. It's hard for us to keep up with you, but we believe you mean it. <laughs> it's good. I've drafted about three different preachers because I didn't know if he was going to make it. I've been standing out here waiting. We're glad you made it tonight. Um, I've been asked to introduce uh, Pastor Ray. Hill and his wife Rose, Sister Rose. Is you want to stand? Praise. Yeah, good. And when we were looking.
looking for those to come for the revival, uh, Pastor said right out the gate, said, well, why don't you ask the people that have had you in Mania? And uh, certainly we wanted to do that. But I just want to uh, just give you one little quick thought with him that just comes to mind. About three years ago, I guess it's been, I got a call from Delphine and Pastor Ray, and he asked me if I would come to Manio to preach in his church, a revival. And um, I was honored to do that, and for the last three years have been up there, and it's just been wonderful uh, experience for us. I'll tell you, they have richly blessed us, and uh, we've just enjoyed it so. But I can remember this pastime going up there just this past year, and I started going up, and I want to say this too, it's Missionary Baptist Church, it is the oldest church in Manio, on the island, the oldest church on the island, and I didn't know that, uh, I knew growing up in Manio that it existed, and uh, just knew it was there, but I did not know it was the oldest church, Pastor Ray and his wife traveled from Lisbon City to pastor in this church, and back and forth in commute, uh, and has been serving there 10 years, nine years in that church. So uh, just a great thing there. But one little story, I started up this one night uh, for the, about the second night of the revival, third night, and I really felt impressed upon my heart. I wanted to go in the direction of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, driving up to Manio, between Manio and Wanchis on that road, it hit me, Baptist. Missionary Baptist Church and I was all geared up to go with the baptism in the Holy Spirit and a, a fear began to grip me and just the enemy fighting me here and said look you're liable to open up a powder keg for him that he's going to have to fix if you go into the baptism in the Holy Spirit so I got in his office and I said pastor I need to ask you a question he said go ahead sure and I said I've really felt to preach on the baptism in the Holy Spirit up here tonight and then all of a sudden I realized your sign says Baptist and uh, he caught on pretty quick whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Here he stopped me he said, you don't worry about that one bit he said we are Baptocostal here is what he told me he said you take off and you let it go so I appreciated that and the freedom and the Lord did move and we had a wonderful time and so missionary Baptist Pentecostal church we welcome you here. We're glad you're here. We thank you for what you're doing in Manio and the work there on the island. We appreciate you. Uh, I tell you like you tell us. Have your liberty. Praise God, preach, and we're just glad to have you. It's an honor to have you. Okay. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I tell you what, I tell you what, it seems like we're getting real comfortable in church. Ah. Somebody ask everybody to stand. Everybody can to stand. Mm, we're going to do a little aerobics. Uh-huh. We're going to do a little aerobics. Everybody lift both of their hands high like, like, like God is high and lifted up. And lean back a little bit. Don't fall over. Just lean back a little bit. And just shout, hallelujah. 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 Right, now give God some praise out of your mouth while you're sitting down. Come on, give him some praise out of your mouth while you're sitting down. Amen. 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 I believe, I believe in making some noise. Make him some noise. Because see, 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 when God... Send something. He said he made noise. You remember in the upper room, huh? The sound of a mighty wind. That was noise. Everybody, everybody wanted to know what was going on. Uh huh. They found out, didn't they? Found out what was going on. Praise the Lord. God is good, and He's worthy to be praised. I thank uh, Pastor Midget. For inviting me. We're always excited when he comes. Because he always leaves some residue for me to work with. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes pastors, you know, we, we, we try to find something to go to, to, to correspond and lift up the spirit that uh, the previous 
revival is left so we can keep that motivation. But I tell you, he sure makes it easy for me. He sure makes it easy for me through the power of the Holy Ghost. God is so good, and he's worthy to be praised. And my glasses is in the back. <laughs> but we're going to keep going anyways. Let your glory fill this house. Let your glory fill this house. Let the fragrance of your sweet. Remove all fear and doubt So your glory can fill this house Let your presence fill this house let your presence fill this house. Let the fragrance of your sweet anointing fill this temple. Remove all fear and doubt. So your presence can fill this house. Amen. Whew, glory to God. Glory to God. Let me finish what I was saying because that just came over me. Y'all got to y'all gotta forgive me because I'm spontaneous. God will change everything quick like that. The people at the Baptist Castle church know that he'll change on me. God will change the message quick. That's why I try to keep my, my heart open to what God wants. Amen? Amen. We have to do that. We have to do that. Mm. Pastor Midget, I love him because he's genuine. He has a good heart. He has a strong spirit. And I'd be excited every time he comes. And I honestly want to thank him for inviting me here this year. It's special to me. It's special to my heart. You know, because there's a lot of pastors that will that come to yours but won't let you come to them. Somebody say amen. 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 Tell the truth. Say the devil. <laughs> amen. God is good. God is good. I want to uh, bring your attention, though, for those who have your Bibles, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Mm. Romans chapter 10. Okay, my own name there. Okay. All right. These work. Okay. Thank you, whoever glasses they are. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ah. <laughs> uh, God always have a ram in the bush. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, man, thanking him. <laughs> God is good. And we just want to look at one verse. Verse 17. Yeah, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. That's it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, I decrease my physical body and I lift up my spirit, man, that I may be connected with you, that you may do to me, through me, and with me your will, for it's not my will, but it's thine will that shall be done. Almighty God, I pray all of you and none of me 
I pray that you would ever, ever increase as I ever, ever decrease. Our Father and our God, I pray in the name of Jesus that the people of God who's assembled here right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will decrease their physical body and lift up their spirit, man, so that their spirit can understand what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Almighty God, I thank you and I praise you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Speak, Lord. Your servants hear you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The more you talk back to me, the more God will speak to you. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. The thought that we want to use comes out the 17th verse. Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. But the thought that we really want to use is hearing the word initiates faith. Hearing the word initiates faith. No one can transplant a heart of faith into you like it's a new body part. Faith is more like a muscle that you already have. It's just, it just needs to be strengthened. We have to be, we have to be intentional about making our faith grow. I'm not, I'm not saying that to, 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 I'm not saying that this putting you under the bus, but what I'm really saying is that there are millions of people across the world exercising daring faith right alongside of you. Daring faith, daring faith, that's radical faith. Daring faith is what, is, is what it takes for you to get past the obstacle that you, that's facing you right now. Whatever you're going through, God don't want you to veer to the left. He don't want you to veer to the right. He wants you to go through what you're going through so that faith, your faith can be strengthened. And as long as your faith is being strengthened, you're going through what you're facing, then God is strengthening you. Okay, 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 because God loves you. He loves you. Remember that. He loves you. With a passion, he loves you. The Bible said God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. God is a good God. And I love the way he loved me. But what I want to talk to you about is even more basic. I want to go back to the source document of our faith. And that's the Bible. See, the Bible is a living force. We call it the word of God because it is God speaking. And it's still speaking. It never stops speaking. We have, to, we have to grab hold to this word of God right here and let it be engraved in our hearts and in our minds for real. It's not a play to it, not just a book. Is a speaking everlasting book. It's the true voice of God. So we have to listen, study to show yourself, approve unto God a workman. So you got to be a workman. When you get the word, you got to be, you got to work it. You got to work the word. How many know they got to work the word? How do I work the word? You speak the 
word. You have to speak the word. If you have faith in God and God said, I never leave you and never forsake you, then he gives you the power to speak his word. And when you speak his word, you, you have the authority to rebuke, reprove, strengthen, and everything about you in this word, you have the right to it. God gives you the right to it. He gives you the right to it. Oh, yes, he do. In a way, the word is the word is what daring faith is all about. Daring faith. When we think about daring faith, think about Daniel. Daniel prayed. He prayed against all odds. He prayed against the decree that was put out. Ain't it right? He had daring faith. And somebody tried to go behind his back to tell the king about him. Ain't it right? I got some Bible, some Bible scholars, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Daniel was using daring faith because he made up his mind and he made up in his heart. That I'm not bowing down to no other than my God. You can do what you want to do. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on the promises of God. And it's time for us to truly stand on the promises of God. And you know how the devil works. When you get God's attention, you get the devil's attention. So when you're standing on the word of God, then the word of God is going to protect you. You got something to stand on. So when they came, when the king ordered them to bring him, then what did he do? He just went on and did, have your way because I'm not bowing down. Threw him in the lion's den. But that king had a restless spirit. He had a restless spirit. I'm just showing you how, how, how radical faith works. I'm trying to show you how, how strong faith is. When you give yourself all the way to Christ, not part of the way, take your mind off what the world is doing and do the will of God, then you standing on the promise of God, God will stand for you. You can't be ashamed. You can't be a secret agent Christian. You can't be an in-the-closet Christian. Either you're all the way in, or you're all the way out. That's what time we're living in. We're living in the end time. And we got to take a stand. We got to take a stand for Jesus Christ now. And time, time, things are getting even tighter. When it's going to boil down to the church. Amen. Amen. But, but, but Daniel, Daniel went down in the lion's den. He won't wear it. Because he knew that his God was going to take care of him. And he took care of him because when they threw him in there, the lion didn't even go crazy and they were hungry. There's some fresh living meat right there. But the hand of God, hand of God rubbed him. You don't eat this one. This one belonged to me. And, 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 and he made the lions a pillow for him. But the king had a restless spirit. He couldn't sleep. He liked David, but he had a decree. So he had to stand on his decree. Amen? So after he stayed, stayed, stood on his de decree and he walked around, he stayed up all night long. But when day broke, when the sun started rising, first thing he did was ran down a uh, 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 Daniel. Daniel, did, the, did your God save you? Long live the king. Long live the king. He was in there with lions, but God rocked him to sleep. Amen. We're talking about bold, radical faith. Because there's going to come a time when we have to stand on that faith. There's going to come a time when we're going to have to stand on the promises of God. Because God is waiting on you. God has a plan for your life. 
God is waiting on you. So in order for you to receive what God has for you, you got to build your faith. We have to continue to build our faith. We have to keep on building our faith. Because God is worthy. And he shows us every day that he's worthy. Just like uh, David, when he was a little boy, he took his brother's lunch. Because they were hungry. Mom wanted to make sure they had some tea. They said some tea. He went up there, and all those, all those army guys that he would call them, they sent up there scared. Because one man standing up there talking all the trash he wanted to talk. Send somebody up here, you scared? Send somebody. All bold. And everybody else shivering. David said, I'll go get him. I'll go get him. No, no, you, 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 you can go. But you got to put this on. And they put the armor on him. And they weighed him down. He said, I can't do that. I'll go get him. I sure go get him. And he walked out there, picked up five smooth stones. See, he was brave in the word of God. No matter what came at him, he going to stand. How many want to stand like David? No, 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 no. Not want to. Who's going to stand like David? You got to stand. Because we're coming to the point where we have to stand on the word of God. And watch this. We're going to have to do it together. Okay, I'm going to say it on this side. We're going to have to do it together. That's what God is calling for. That's how come we got a Pentecostal Assembly of God church. The name going to get longer. <laughs> but God, God, God really, God, God is really focusing on us now because he want to know who's going to stand in a time of adversity. Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith initiate things. The word, hearing the word of God initiate things. It gives you strength when you think you don't have none. It, 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 it opens up a new avenue of faith that's in you, but you haven't activated it yet. The more you hear the word of God, the more you read the word of God, the more you study the word of God, the stronger your faith gets. The stronger your faith gets. And God is waiting on you because he wants to do supernatural things through you. You're never too old. You're never too young. And it don't, it don't have nothing, ooh, 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 ooh. it don't have nothing to do with the color barrier. Because you belong to God just like I do. Amen. Amen. He made all of us. We need to. We need to cut that foolishness out. It's time to cut it out and be people of God. And that's it. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, 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 okay. Because see, because see, 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 the devil's having fun with the church. You see how God turned things? God, the devil had fun with the church. He's sending anything in the church because he think he had the upper hand. Ain't it right? whole lot of crazy stuff going on, people of God. I'm going to call you people of God because you're out here yes. on a Tuesday night after work. You love God. Ain't they Tuesday? <laughs> Let's see if you're listening. <laughs> I played that off nice, didn't I? <laughs> No, but, 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 but getting back to what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you know, God, God is waiting on us. And he's waiting for us to have faith in his promise. If we can stand on his promise, if we can stand on his promise, if we can completely stand on his promise, or his promises, faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. But he also said, I never leave you and never forsake you. Take that seriously. Take it in your heart and in your spirit and in your mind. See, a lot of churches are playing with that. Well, God ain't going God, God ain't going nowhere because he loves me. Yeah, but what are you doing for him? 
What are you doing for him? Are you praising him like you should? Are you worshiping him like you should? Are you lifting up your voice like you should? God, is, God inhabits the praises of his people. Where are his people at? If you have faith in God, you can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hearing the word of God initiates faith. Put faith to work. You can always have the word in you, and when you get to a situation, the Holy Spirit will lift you up and lift that word that you studied in the right situation, in the right situation. And when you're in trouble, I know God said he never leave me, never forsake me, so I'm going to stand on his promise. That what Joshua did, Joshua stood on his promise, and he had so much so much courage, and, and, and he had so much, he loved God so much, he trusted God so much, when he prayed to God, Lord, stop the sun. Make the sun stand still. That's faith. Can you say a prayer like that? Yes, you can. If you have enough faith in God. Because God made that promise. He promised that whatever you ask, in the name of Jesus, it shall be done unto you. And really he said the same thing to Joshua, but he didn't say it that way. He said that, he said that I, will, I, will, I, will, I will fight your battle. I will fight your battle. See, if you have faith in God enough, he will fight your little battles that we have. See, our battles don't have to be big ones. It's the one that stays on our, our mind and try to keep us, try to keep us confused. And when we seem to be confused, that's when Satan comes in and try to trip you up. Somebody say, but God. When God make a promise, he's going to honor his promise. But what have you promised God lately? Oh, come back home now, ain't it? Come back home now, ain't it? We always looking for what God has in his hands, but we're not willing to give nothing in his ministry. We're not, we're not trying to give nothing to his glory. We hold back our praise. We hold back our praise. Question. Okay, okay. See, the Holy Ghost speak while I'm speaking. So, so I'm saying what he's saying. When was the last time you really spent time with God by yourself? When was the last time you really got in your quiet place and just, and just let God minister to you and you minister to him? When was the last time you did that? Don't nobody shout me down. Just think about it for yourself. Because, see, see, God wants us to have supernatural faith. Supernatural faith. We want the kind of faith where we can walk on water. Huh? We want to walk on water. How many want to walk on water? Ah, I saw some hands go up. Lord have mercy. We're talking about the kind of faith that will, that, that will show you the supernaturalness in you. See, 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 that's what we keep in under covers because we're not giving, okay, it's not your will, it's God's will. When you submit yourself to God's will, then you can walk on water, just ask. That what Peter did, Jesus, if it be thou, bid me come on the water. And Jesus said one word, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And what the word said, but here come the devil. He was doing the supernatural. Here come the devil. Here come the wind blowing. And he, and he got fearful and started sinking. 
See, when you start sinking and you can't, and your back is against the wall and you can't turn, you don't know which way to go, cry out to the Lord. Lord, help me. Sometimes you, God waiting for you to cry out. You know, you, you, yes, it's good to cry out in your spirit. Lord, help me. But God gives you a mouth. Lord, you see, how, you see how strong that came out? Put the mic down. Lord, help me. I can't take it no more. I don't know which way to say I can't handle it. Lord, I need your help. That's what God wants us to be. He wants to cry out from our heart. And if we can cry out from our heart, then God will answer you faster than you think. I know sometimes we have to have patience. But sometimes God see, see the urgency in your faith. And he do it when you don't even think he's going to do it. Amen. Amen. I'm just trying to show you that, 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 that our faith, our faith is too low. We got to bring it up. We got to raise it up. We got to flex our muscles now. We got to flex our muscles. We got to walk around like this. You don't look like you feeling, but you know why you're doing it. And people going to look at you, why are you walking around like that? Ask him. And when they ask you, because the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. And I got the right to walk around like I'm buff. <laughs> we got to have radical faith. That's what it takes nowadays, radical faith. There's only one place we can acquire faith. You, you got to go to the word of God. And in the pages of the scripture, as God promised, becomes personal to you. Your faith potential, potential, potential is ignited. I pray that, that, that what's, been, what, what's been happening to you as you've been reading, I pray that your faith will be awakened. Each biblical example in the Word of God should cause you, your own spiritual circuit breaker, to light up. In other words, all of us have a circuit breaker. And the word of God is the juice that runs through our circuit breaker. You are the circuit breaker. The same thing happens every time you go to church. You should, you, you, your, your, your circuit breaker should be ignited. And should be ignited, ignited by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. The Bible constantly tells us, he that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So to live by daring faith, you're going to need to become very familiar with the Word of God. You're, you're, you're going to need to, to saturate your mind in the Word of God. If your faith isn't rooted, in the word of God, if it's not rooted in the promises of God, it's not spiritual faith. It's wishing faith. Mm. Mm. So the question comes, what kind of faith do you really have? Do you have spiritual faith or do you have wishing faith? Sometimes we say, you know, I got faith in God that he's going he, he's gonna to pay my light bill. Because he know I don't have the money. And I have faith that he's going to pay my light bill. Then five minutes later, I hope he pay my light bill. <laughs> I sure hope he pay my light bill. Where's your faith? How many people have really given up on their faith? Their faith in God. Some people just come to church on Sunday just to come to church on Sunday because grandma and them used to drag us to church when we didn't want to go. 
We were faithful to the club when we were shaking the fast and dropping the hot. But when it's time to get up and go to church, <laughs> when it's time to go to church, you can't get up. Where's your faith? Well, I work hard all week. I don't feel like going to church. The devil is a liar. Get up. You got up to go to work. 7 o'clock, 6, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. You're faithful. Hit the clock on time. But when it comes down to coming to church, where's your faith then? Where's your faith then? If you come to church, you come late. You don't want to be here with the saints of the people because you had sleep. <laughs> but you're coming to church. You ain't got nothing. You, you ain't getting nothing out of it. Stop playing games. Listen to me. Stop playing games with the devil. Playing games with the devil. You, and people in church playing games with the devil. They come to church just to come to church. Sit down so everybody in the neighborhood see you went to church Sunday. But you didn't receive anything because your heart is locked up. Locked up, worrying about Monday. Getting back to work Monday when you, be, when you should be worrying about, uh, I so pray that God wake me up. Give me another day. Give me, you know what? Let me say this to you too while, while I'm at that corner. John the Baptist, that's my boy. That's my state partner right there. John the Baptist had one sermon. He preached every Sunday. Repent, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. But you saying repent, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Those who are not saved, repent, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Okay, okay, let me help you with repent. Before you go to bed every night, hear me, hear me. Before you lay your head on that pillow, your duty is to repent. Before you lay your head on the pillow, Lord, I repent of my sins that I committed today, knowingly and unknowingly. See, cause, 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 see, 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 like I said, God is waiting on you. And if you want to wake up the next morning or you want to get some peaceful sleep, see, that's why people can't sleep. Because they got a restless spirit. God is missing out of their life. And those who are saved, I'm, I'm going to deal with the saved too. See, God just changed the whole message. Okay. He, just, he just turned it all around. <laughs> because, because God wants this to be heard in this day and time. Because we're in the end time. And if we don't refresh and re give you, remind you, then it's going to be on our shoulders. Amen. Amen. Repent. Repent. Repentance does a lot while you sleep. Because when you repent, you give God an easy decision to make. Because when you repent, you're cleaning the slate all over again. And you can get a sound sleep. You got peace of mind because you repented to the Lord. And when you repent to the Lord, you know what God is doing? God is deciding whether you're going to wake up or not. And, then, and see, that's the, only that's the only person that can make that decision. And, when, and, when, and, and while you sleep and you have repented, God is working on your tomorrow. He can your tomorrow right. Because he made a decision that I'm going to give him another day. 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 And then when you wake up, the first thing you should do, Lord, I thank you. I thank you 
for another day. I thank you because you gave me my right mind. I thank you because you gave me the activity of my, of my limbs. Lord, I thank you because everything you made with me is still here. Lord, thank you for this day. And then you turn around and say, Lord, I give you my day. I give you my day, Lord. The Lord will guide your footsteps. Everything that he has for you is coming to you. Everything that he wants. Okay, let me make this short. God wants to give you all that he is and all that he has. So if he wants to do that for you, what are you willing to do for him? Are you willing to praise him? Are you willing to lift him up? If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Think about it. How many times have you really repented before you went to bed? God, wants you, God wanted you to hear that. Add that to building your faith. Building your faith. Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. It might not come out just like it is in the word, but it come out like God wants you to hear it so you can clearly understand it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't have no doubt. I don't have no doubt that God is going to wake us up in the morning because you're being obedient to the word of God. The word of God said, forsake not the assembly of the saints. Then he said, who? It says, assembly of the saints. How many saints do we have in here? <laughs> Come on, show your hands. Don't be scared. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. Because if you're standing on the word of God and you're living on the word of God, you got a right to raise your hand. Raise it up high, boldly. Okay, amen, <laughs> amen, amen. And you know what? I ain't, trying to, I ain't trying to get you to shout me down. I ain't trying to get you to, to, to shout at all. Because the Bible says, he that has ears, let him hear. And I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you're listening because God is speaking to you right now. Whether you realize it or not, because when a man of God opens his mouth, nothing coming out but what God tells him to say. Now, if somebody come to you, I'm, can I be real? If, if somebody come here talking about a prosperity plan, they ain't telling you nothing new. Because the prosperity plan that they selling you, God already got his own. He already got his own. That's why God wants you to stick to the word of God. God will take care of you. He said, I will take care of you. Haven't he taken care of you? Come on, talk back to you. Have he take? He has taken care of everybody in here. Yes, he has. He's taken care of everybody in here, and I know he has. All of us have been in some tight places, even on deathbed. Ain't it right? When you thought you weren't gonna get out of that deathbed, God, the Spirit of God, raised you up. Ain't it right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got a testimony. And then we're going to close this up now. See, because God just didn't close this right on up, Pastor. Because, see, you, you, you talking about faith in God and God taking care of you. I came home from church, and my wife is my witness. I came home from church, walked in the house, went back there, changed my clothes while she was fixing dinner on the table, walked back out there, and sit down, and soon as I picked up the fault, my bro was hungry, <laughs> my body went like that. I was paralyzed. For real. I was paralyzed. And I called my wife, told her to dial 911. She looked at me and smiled. She thought I was joking. <laughs> so I looked at her and said, call 911. And she called them, and they had to take me out of there. Con what had happened was I had a bulge disc in the back of my neck. 
and I didn't know it. And they shipped me off to DePaul Hospital, and they did the operation. A few weeks later, God blessed me with my physical body back. Because I went through the process. I was praising him while I was down. And while I was down, I kept my faith. And now look at me. I'm walking right now just like nothing ever happened. Part two. Two months later. And my church is my witness. I was in the pulpit. Just like I am now. And I had started my sermon. I went all the way in, but I had started it. And I started feeling it. I never had a heart attack before, so I started feeling it. I started leaning, I kept on trying, and the voice came just to clear, back up and sit down. And I backed up and sit down. And somebody, I think it was our, our organist player, he dialed 911 right then because God touched him to let him know something was wrong. And the paramedics came. And when they came, all I remember them doing is taking me out the pulpit and, and took me in the deacon room. Later on, later on, I found out they didn't let my wife in the, in the, in the, in the, in the ambulance. I was already gone. But when I got to the hospital, uh, that's the sound they said I made. And the Lord blew breath of life back in me. And then when I could finally, when the, when the, when the, when the emergency, what you call Nightingale, Nightingale me to Virginia, to Virginia Beach General. They said I was gone on the helicopter. But when I touched the ground, when the helicopter touched the ground, they said I took a long one. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know how long it was. <laughs> but the Lord. But God, it's not over to God, says it's over. And they rolled me into the operating room. And I laid there and watched them take two blood clots that had traveled through my body and blocked my, both of my main arteries. And I watched them get it out. They want not number God showing me how good he is. So if you don't believe God raised Jesus from the dead, if you don't believe it, I believe it. I believe it. The good news is, the bad news is wrong. <laughs> Same thing about those out, out here who are cancer survivors. When you first heard the news that you had cancer, your whole world stopped. Somebody say, but God. But God said not so. The bad news, the good news is that bad news was wrong. And right in your life right now, something is going on. In your life right now, you can't handle it, and you're looking at it as bad news. Well, I got good news for you. The good news is that bad news was wrong. Can I get a witness out there? Can I get a witness out there? Somebody's life has been changed. And you know what? Somebody's life is going to change in here tonight before you leave here. Because God wants you to stand up now. He wants you to stand up and be counted in the body of Christ now. So settle things in your mind and settle things in your heart right now. Trouble don't last always. If you got God in your life, if, you, if God's ahead of your life, trouble don't last always. The devil is going to play with you. He's going to try to rock you to sleep. rock a baby on the treetop. When the, come on, sing with me. When the wind blows, what happened? 
Come on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you are the baby. The devil trying to rock you to sleep. He's trying to take you out of God's hand. He's trying to, like Pastor Mitchell said when he came to Haven Creek, missionary, Pentecostal, <laughs> Assembly of God Church. He said the devil is trying to sift you as wheat. Trying to take your life. Somebody said the devil, the devil is a liar. liar. That's what you have to start saying to the devil. You got, see, 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 it's good to be saved, but you got to be all the way saved. Yes. Call the devil for what he is. Yes. When you see things not right and you know they're supposed to be right, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yes. You have no place in my house. You have no place on my job. You have no place in my children's life. Plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus over your life, your family life, over your house, over your job. Plead the blood of Jesus. Don't let the blood just be there and dry up. Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Let the power of the Holy Spirit, like we said, the power of the Holy Ghost that's already in you, activate it. You hear the word. The word is engraved in a lot of you. Activate it. Put in the word. Faith without work is, faith without work is, faith without work is, is dead. Time to lift up your heads, all you gates. Be ye lifted up, the everlasting door, the king of glory. It's already in you. Let God be God. Let God be God in your life. Don't waste your life no more. Somebody said, Jesus, Jesus is coming back for the church, not a church. He's coming back for the church. And the church is supposed to be getting ready for the bride to come. How many want to be ready when he comes? How many really want to be ready when he comes? I'm going to be ready. When I woke up this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I didn't have no doubt. And when I wake up, that's right, I'm prophesying. When I wake up in the morning, uh-huh, I'm still not going to have no doubt. And when I wake up Wednesday morning, to Wednesday morning, I know the day is Monday now. When I, <laughs> when, I, when I wake up Wednesday morning, I I'm still ain't going to have no doubt. Because every time you wake up in the morning, God says yes to your life. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Don't shout me down because you just heard something. Because what I'm trying to tell you is we got to look at it straight up. Somebody say straight up. Straight up. Everybody say straight up. Straight up. That means ain't nothing hidden. Nothing hidden. God wants you to know it plainly so you can live it every day. So you can walk upright every day. So you can live right every day. So you can designate this time to spend with God. I designate this time to read the word. See, because our job is to worship and praise him. But we got to know who we're worshiping and what we're praising him for. Amen? Amen. You can't waste your time no more. Time, uh, old folks used to say, time winding up. Time winding up. Time to wound up. Time to wound up. People of God. People of God. People of God. Everybody just say yes. yes. That sounds good. Delight yourself in the Lord. Please delight yourself in the Lord. 
The Lord took me off the message because he wants you to hear this. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If anything that was said tonight touched your spirit, it belonged to you. That's your part. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us stand. There may be somebody that don't know Jesus as their personal Savior. It's time for you to get to know him. Meet him for yourself. Jesus died on Calvary just for you. Just for you. For the remission of your sins. He shed in his blood. Think about your life right now. Is it like you want it to be? Is it like you need it to be? Ask yourself this question. Have I pleased God with my life? Where I am right now, have I really pleased God? Is God happy with me right now? And if you're serious about it, ask, ask God, say, Lord, show me what you see in me. Ah, that's soul searching right there. So if you want to be saved, if you want to give God your life, if you want to give Jesus your life, come now. If you need prayer for anything, come now. If you're going through something right now that you can't handle and you're confused, come now. This is your time. That's why you're here tonight. Because you have a need and you can't be ashamed of asking God or putting it in God's hand. Put it in God's hand. Just put it in God's hand. Give it to him. I saw the hands that went up and said they have faith in God. Where's your faith now? Nothing is too big and nothing is too small for God to handle. If something is not right in your life, or even if you just need more strength, come to the altar. If you being confused, if you're confused about something, this is the right place. You're in the right place at the right time to come and pray to God for your ailment or for whatever's going on. God has been patient, waiting on you. He has been patient. All your life, God has been patient. We want God to touch us right now. How many need a refreshing? We come here to be revived. How many need a refreshing of the Holy Spirit? God wants us to be filled over and over and over and over again. If you need a refreshing, bring it to the altar. Bring it to the altar today. Don't wait. Today could be your last day. That's how serious it is. How many know God is a keeper? God will keep you in perfect peace. That's why you need him. That's why we pray to him. That's why we have faith in him. Let your faith get radical. The devil is holding you back right now. I feel it in my spirit. God is holding you back right now because I don't want to go in front of all them people. Or I go up there every night. So what? We need him every day. It's not what people say, it's what you say. And what God says. God is real. God is real. Don't let a 
day go by. Don't ever let a day go by without praising the Lord. Don't ever let a day go by without praying to the Lord. Don't ever let a day go by not spending time with God in your quiet place. Don't ever let a day go by without reading his word for yourself. The Bible says, study to show yourself. Approve unto God a workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly, dividing the word of truth. If you have a need from the Lord, come now. Come now. God is a patient God. 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 See, this is your time. You still have to face the devil tomorrow. You still gonna have to face, face evil tomorrow. But just know this, if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Stand on that. Stand on that. Is there anybody else? in this place I feel Jesus I feel Jesus I feel Jesus 
He's in this place. I feel Jesus right here in this place. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word of God initiates faith. Let God move you. Let God move you. Let us stand. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. For God, you have been so good to us. Father, we pray right now for the saints of God, the people of God that are assembled here right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch them again. Hear their cry out of their spirits, God. Father God, I, pre I plead the blood of Jesus over each family, each family's house, God. Let your presence be known. Even when we leave here and they turn the key and they open the door, be there for them, God. You know what their situation is. If they are children, heal it, God. Fix it. If it's the marriage, God, fix it. If it's the job, Lord, fix it. If it's healing, God, that's needed, heal it. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for what has happened today. You kept us all day long. And you stayed right there with us. Through trouble, you brought us out. A lot of things that you blocked today from hurting us. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for the love that you have for us. Father, we thank you for everything. Even though the world, man, has corrupted the world, you are still in charge. 
you're still in charge. You're still the ruler. For the earth is the Lord's and the full is thereof and all that dwell within. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We pray in the name of Jesus that this branch of Zion will continue to prosper in the spirit as well as on this earth. God, we thank you and we praise you. Now may grace, mercy, truth, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Go in peace and walk in your anointing.